All right, so let's begin. Let's get on our mats. We're just taking a seated position on the knees. So to make sure all of our security features are on and we're ready to go. And I'm guessing you can all hear me. I see Connor right there. Can you make sure? Cool, thank you. All right. So we're starting on the knees and you can always sit on your block if you have it or a blanket. So I'm gonna sit on my block because we're gonna sit here for a couple minutes. <sighs> nice. We're starting with a breath called Bastrika breath. Um, it's meant to warm the core. I'm already out of breath for some reason, I'll be talking. Uh, it's meant to warm the core and kind of get your heart rate going. And today's class will be mostly about using core arms and shoulders to get into some arm support poses. And we'll play with some arm balancing as well if you feel comfortable and that's really up to you during the class. So. Starting with Bastrika, you're gonna copy me, reaching the arms up. Take an inhale, exhale, bring the hands down to fists, elbows down, out to the mouth. Now you can either reach up like this, elbows by your side, and kind of a goalpost arm, or you can do what I'm gonna do, reach up towards the middle and kind of rotate the hands down like you're pulling something down, like rope or something like that. And the reason I do this is because if I did this, you'd hear my shoulders crack and you don't wanna hear that. So anyways, we're gonna start with a count of 10. So inhale for one. And rest, thumbs down the center of the palms, wrap the fingers around, knuckles together. Take a deep breath and hold the breath in. A little more in. And breathe a little more in. Hold it in. Shoulders lower down, hold it in. Big exhale to the mouth. <sighs> Take a breath in and release it out. Hold the breath out. Exhale a little more if you can. And a little bit more if you can. Nice. Release, inhale. So that's one round. We're gonna start again for round number two. Inhale and begin. And rest. Thumbs down, wrap the fingers around, knuckles together, elbows out, deep breath in, hold the breath in. Puff up the chest, a little breath in. Breathe in even more. Hold it in. Exhale all the way. Take a deep breath in. And an exhale out. Hold the breath out. Exhale a little more and a little bit more. Hold it out. Release, inhale. Let's do one more round. Inhale, the arms lift and begin. And rest. Thumbs down, wrap the fingers around the thumbs, knuckles together, deep breath in, hold the breath in. Puff the chest out, roll the shoulders down, sip in more and more. Exhale all the way out. Deep breath in, exhale, release, and hold the breath out. Exhale a little bit more and a little bit more. Hold it out, release, inhale. And rest the palms facing up on the thighs. Close the eyes, let the shoulders relax. Take a few breaths. Stay here and breathe. Just let the shoulders roll down and back. Great, open the eyes. From here, since we're doing some arm balancing, arm support poses, we're going to kind of let the wrists relax and stretch out. So we're just starting by some simple rotating of the wrists, kind of moving the fingers, 
in little circles in one direction. And go in the other direction, which feels super weird now that I do it. Nice. From here, we're going to tuck the fingers behind the thumbs and flick the fingers away, kind of like you're flicking water on somebody. Flicking the fingers from the thumbs. And at first, it doesn't feel like much, but keep going. You're going to feel it. It's like the weirdest workout on your hands. Keep going. Let's keep going for five, four, three, two, and one. Relax. Lower that right shoulder down. Pull the fingers away with the left hand. You can let that thumb loose. Gently just pulling the fingers toward you. If you want to throw in a little neck stretch, you can tilt the head over to the left. Why not? And then let's take the thumb separately, pull the thumb toward you. I had someone, um, I think, email me recently about, you know, why am I having wrist pain every time I start doing yoga? And that could just be, I mean, I'm not a doctor. I always have to stress that. But it could just be, you know, your wrists just need a little more stretching before you start. It can be a lot on the wrists. Um, and depending on what you do for a job, what you do for hobbies, maybe your wrists are already compromised a little bit. So it's always good to do these wrist and finger exercises beforehand. Let's switch sides. Left hand, pull the fingers toward you, press the wrist away. You can always tilt the head over to the right. Relaxing that left shoulder. And just breathe here. Maybe you take a few deep breaths. Maybe you find your ujjayi breath. Ujjayi breath is also called victorious breath. So maybe you think of that while you breathe. I don't know. Whatever helps you breathe. Let's take the thumb now separately. Pull it toward you. I promise you the class gets a little harder after this. So don't worry. I just want to make sure you're warmed up in the right places. All right, nice. From here, I'm just going to start to roll the shoulders down and back, lifting up and rolling back in little circles. And if you want to exaggerate the movement, you can also lift the elbows, almost like you're doing a backstroke. You can also do a backstroke if you want to. However much movement you have, or how much room you have, go for it. Let's switch directions, either with the arms or the shoulders or with the elbows. It never feels good. And one last thing with the arms, we're just hugging that right arm in with the left. Just a simple little stretch. Right across the shoulder. Switch sides, left arm in front. <sighs> nice. And let's come down onto our side. Let's start with the right side. So we're coming down to the side. We're gonna reach that right arm in back of us. And the, the leg that's on the floor, I'm gonna just bend the knee a little bit to have more of a stable base. From here, I'm going to have that left foot flexed and pushing straight into the wall in front of me as if I'm pressing into a wall right there. And I'm going to bring that left hand cupping behind the skull. And I'm going to lift little lifts in that left leg as I tuck the tailbone underneath and I hug the belly button in towards the spine. Very important. You tuck the tailbone and keep the ribs lowered down so you don't get into a back bend here and lose the whole structure of this pose. So we're lifting and lowering that left leg. And as you do that, you can start to add a little crunch to the side. <sighs> Try to do it nice and slow and control. The more control you use here, the deeper the work is in the core. 
in the obliques. So remember hugging the belly in. Try not to let that back bend come into play here. A quick shout out to uh, my physical therapist, Molly, who's been helping me do this uh, core work in the correct way. So I don't do the whole back bend cop out. Let's do a few more. Three, two, and one. Let's switch sides. I'm gonna switch this way. You can just roll into the other side. Left arm reaches. That left knee is slightly bent to get a stable base. And you flex that right foot, pressing into a wall, I guess, behind you still. And the right hand cuffs behind the head. Little lifts, we start with the leg. Nice and controlled. Even though it doesn't look hard, it should feel hard because of the amount of effort you're using here. Okay, we're getting rid of the back bend. We're tucking the tailbone underneath. We're hugging the belly button in. It might help to bring the chin in closer to the chest. The more you lift it, the more you feel like you might come into a back bend. And then we start adding the little oblique crunch. Feeling the work, feeling the control, most importantly. And it can be little. If you want to stop here and just do pulses, that works too. Kind of explore what feels good for you as long as you're getting that core work. Hugging the belly in. We're almost there. Let's do a few more. And three, two, and one. Lower down. Whew. Nice. Let's come onto our backs. You thought core work was over, didn't you? Not quite yet. Let's interlace the hands behind the head. Lifting the knees, lifting the feet. You can have them pointed, you can have them flexed. So knees are over the hips, but maybe a little bit further away from the hips in front of you. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can keep your head here and just kind of extend the legs and draw them. I don't want you to draw the knees totally in here because then you're gonna wanna use momentum. And that kind of takes away the whole point of this pose. I want you to extend the legs out in front of you and then draw the knees just over the hips. So it's not that much movement here. You can keep the head where it is, or if you wanna kind of add the crunch when you bring the knees closer, you can do that as well. Maybe try both, see what you like better. Although maybe see which one you don't like better, and that's probably the one that has the most work, right? Let's do a few more. Drawing the belly button in towards the spine as you do this. Three, two, and hug it in, touch the elbows, the knees, and release it down. Whew. Let's let the knees rock side to side. I even felt that in my thighs. Okay, so from here. Now, if you're really good at these core, these lower abdomen workouts, you could have your hands tucked behind your head. I'm not super great at them, especially with my lower back, especially if you have lower back issues as well. Let's tuck the hands underneath the butt. Basically, we're sitting on the hands, palms facing down. I'm sure you've done these before, extending the legs out in front of you. Now, I want to start to kick, little kicks up to the sky, right overhead, and then scissor kick them down towards the floor. Maybe you take long, deep breaths, inhale, as you come up, exhale as you come down. Belly button draws in towards the spine. Keep on going. It looks really cool from here, seeing all your little feet. Nice. Let's go up one more time or down one more time. And then the other way, and then we'll finish with these. <sighs> Relax all the way down. <sighs> nice job. Let's come on to our bellies. We're coming to Sphinx pose. I love doing Sphinx pose right after we do abs. <sighs> Elbows underneath the shoulders, palms on the floor. 
Maybe you let the bottom ribs come toward the uh, mat and you let the head come up facing forward. Press into the elbow so you have more space between your ears and your shoulders and start to look up just a little bit. Oh, I hope you guys like this song. It was like the funniest cover I've ever seen. I was like, I have to put this in class. Okay, let's drop the head down, chin to chest. <sighs> Shake the head out. No, I don't want to do any more core work, Tina. Please don't make me. <sighs> nice job. All right, from here, we're coming up to tabletop. And we're gonna do that pose that I showed you before at the beginning of class, which requires that prop. So if you came in late, go run and grab either um, one or two blocks. You can grab two blankets folded or two um, towels folded. If you have a bolster, that is perfect. But I know a lot of, not a lot of people have bolsters. So I'm gonna use two of my blocks, but this will be two stacked um, blankets if you don't have two blocks. So it can also be one block just a little more comfy with two. So I'm putting them both in the center of my mat. Uh, the blocks are at the medium height. And then I'm gonna come onto a tabletop over the blocks, draw my knees back further away, and then lower my pelvis onto the blocks. From here, my hands are gonna be underneath my shoulders, and I'm gonna lower down the chest and lift the knees up. So if you can tell, I'm trying to see what I look like here, making sure I'm doing it right too. I'm in a very supported chaturanga pose. And I just want you to know what it should feel like and maybe even kind of look like when you're in chaturanga. So your toes are tucked, your legs are strong, your hands are right under your shoulders, and most importantly, your hips are on the same line as your head and your elbows are hugged in towards your torso. So I just wanted to do this pose to show you and maybe even let's come up to plank and try it out. So come up to plank. And then from here, we're gonna shift forward and lower down chaturanga on the blocks or prop. Nice. So go ahead, let's do a few more. Whew. Lower down. Let's come up. And lower down chaturanga. Nice. Go ahead, come off the blocks. So if you ever are at home and you're like, God, I wish I could do a chaturanga without my knees coming down the floor, this is a great way to do it. Having the blocks underneath your pelvis and maybe just doing little push-ups and landing on it. So you have homework now. Let's come to a plank pose. Spread the shoulder blades. Hug the belly in, tuck the tailbone underneath. Look down a little bit forward. Now from here, we're gonna start touching the right knee to right elbow, step it back. Left knee to left elbow, step it back. Repeat, keep going. Left knee, left elbow, right knee, right elbow. Leaning forward as you touch it to the elbow. Let's do five, four, three, two, and one. Let's lower down. Let's really come into a child's pose. Because <sighs> I like a good rest too. Walk the fingertips forward. <sighs> Let's come back into that plank. We'll take another rest in between. Coming back into plank. From here, we're doing the same thing, but the left knee comes to right elbow, twisting. Stepping it back, right knee to left. Keep going at your own pace. It doesn't have to touch exactly. You can just come close. Let's do five, four, three, two, and one, lower the knees down. Let's take puppy pose. So the, knee, the toes stay uh, tucked underneath. We lower the arms down and the heart comes open. Hips stay lifted. 
puppy pose, also known as heart melting pose on a Hatasana. Take a few breaths. Okay, let's come up to tabletop. And in between, I know that was a lot of work, so let's bring the right hand to the center of the mat. Let's lift up the left arm of the sky, coming in to thread the needle, so left arm lowers, left shoulder lowers down. Reaching that left arm towards the right side of the room. The right elbow's lifted as you press up. Maybe you start to look up towards the right shoulder or the sky. Coming out of it, other side, left hand to center, lift the right. Exhale, dive in underneath. Left elbow lifts. Maybe you start to look up towards the sky. And I into this on the other side, but of course there's the option of lifting that left leg in this side. Let's press up, back to tabletop. And we're coming into downward facing dog. <sighs> now you feel it in the shoulders. <sighs> Start to pedal out the heels, getting more of a stretch in the hamstrings now. Pressing all 10 fingers down into the floor. Keep that left heel lower and take the right toes and bring them on top of the left heel to encourage that left heel down. So we're just stacking the right toes on the left heel to bring more weight onto that, to help that hamstring stretch. You can always close your eyes and kind of head bang here. I love doing little movements when I'm flowing at home. Let's switch sides, right foot down, left foot on top of the right heel. Take a couple more breaths. We're gonna look forward. I wanna step one foot in the next for Malasana, a squat. Now I'm gonna turn and face you so you can see me a little better. Hands together. See if you can get the arms in front of the shins. Now there is the opportunity here for you to come into crow pose. And if you want to take your blanket, if you have one, you don't need this, it's just kind of nice, and put it in front of you, maybe stacked so it's got a little cushion to it. Uh, it might make you feel a little better about coming into crow if you're not used to it, just so in case you come down, you're on a blanket, not your hard floor. So to start in crow pose, and I'm going to teach this to a beginner, in case you are, your hands come down to the floor, spread your fingers. And then we start just by pressing the front of the shins into the backs of the arms. Now it looks like I'm not doing anything right now, but I'm actually squeezing the arms into the shins. And that's generally what the pose will feel like. But from here to take it a step further, we're gonna squeeze the shins into the backs of the arms. We're gonna lean forward and lift the heels up off the floor. And let's go ahead and lower them down. If you like your crow and you already know how to do it, just go ahead and practice it while, while I teach to everyone else. From here, if you have that already, you're going to lift the heels, lean forward, and then lift the hips off, off the heels. So we have some height and we're on the toes. To take it the next step further, we can lift one foot, lower it down, lift the other foot, maybe lift both. Maybe you fall into your blanket. Let's see if we can hold for three. Two, and lower down your malasana. Whew. Move a little side to side, nice job. Let's take out the fingertips out in front of the shins to either side. Lift up the right arm, look over to the right arm and reach it up. Switching sides, right fingertips down, left reach, look to the left. Classic mental yoga, you can just kind of rock out, stay here. Let's bring the hands down and forward fold, press down to the floor, lift the hips. So I'm gonna go back at the front of my mat. 
Go ahead, pedal out the feet, bending one knee at a time. Taking a few breaths here in your forward folds. Come to straight legs, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, slowly roll to rise. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Check the tailbone underneath. Lift the toes up, Padabandha. Suck the belly button in towards the spine. Shoulders roll down and back. Reach the arms up and sit back into chair pose, Ukatasana. Breathe here. Reach up. Let's bring the hands to heart center. Stay in your chair. We're going to twist to the right and bring that left arm to the outer right thigh. And we've done this before. We're going to start to lift and lower that left heel. And it might not look great while well you do this transition, but try it out. Picking up the left foot and stepping it back into a lunge. Twisted. Nice. You did it. Keep that back leg strong. Maybe you like to open the arms. It's always nice to have a block underneath your left hand as well. See if you can look up. All right, so here we're lowering the right hand. We're lowering the left heel. We're preparing for warrior two. I'm going to switch around so you don't see the back side of me the whole time. For warrior two. Let's stay here, get a little bit deeper. No need to rush in and out of this pose. Spreading the fingers, reaching forward and back. Turn your chin so it's in line with that right arm. And switch sides, look back at the left arm. Pointing the nose and the chin all the way down your left arm. Look down the right arm. Let's flip and reverse, warrior, reverse warrior. We're coming into side angle pose, right forearm to right thigh, left arm over left ear. And this is where you can grab your block, which is mine is all the way over here. And the block can go next to your right foot. So for this pose, you can always lean that right arm into the right thigh, but I'm gonna have you come down onto the block. If you like to come down all the way to the floor, Go for it. You can also lower the block. <clears throat> so it's at a lower height. So for this transition here, we're gonna bring that left hand down to the block, come onto the toes of the left foot and reach the right arm up for a twisted lunge. And we're gonna come back into that side angle. So lower the right hand down, lower the left heel and reach the left arm up. So we're doing that a few more times. Twisted lunge with the toes tucked. Back to side angle with the heel down. Kind of move at your own pace here. See what feels good with the block. I kind of like it at the higher height actually. That way I can focus more on the outer right hip for me. Let's do a couple more. Go at your own pace. Let's meet at side angle. And let's slowly transition back up warrior two, but just for a moment to transition into triangle pose. Lowering down, right hand can come down to that block or the floor, reaching the left arm up. <sighs> nice. Block and move to the side for now. We're gonna come back into side angle and then our twisted lunge. So again, we're gonna lean forward and then over to the right. Hands at heart center, twisted lunge. Let's see if we can step that left foot forward to meet the right. Whew. Twisted chair. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around the other way again, but you stay where you are. So from here, we're gonna come into a side crow. And that sounds scary and maybe you don't get it quite today, but we're gonna try it out and I'll show you how to set it up. So 
From our side chair, we're gonna go ahead, bend the knees and come down, sitting on the heels. And just take a moment, you can bring the hands down, kind of relax for a second. I'm gonna open up my blanket as a support in case I fall on my face in front of everybody, which will definitely be more embarrassing than if you fall at home and no one sees. So just keep that in mind if you're scared to try it out. So <clears throat> I start by bringing the right fingertips down. <clears throat> I reach the left arm up to the sky and look up and very purposefully bring that left elbow down in front of that right shin and the hand to the floor. So that can just help you come into the pose. Look down at your feet, bring the heels together, toes together. The inner part of the feet are touching. Now we're gonna bring the right palm to the floor and lean the outer right hip into the right elbow. You kind of feel like a clunk, like a, a lean, to where you're not just sitting up on your own, you're leaning into that right elbow. So maybe that's where you practice today, and that's like really the key aspect of this pose. You wanna place the right palm down and lean the outer right hip into the elbow, right elbow. From there, it's a matter of just stacking the legs and stacking the heels. So if you feel comfortable leaning the right hip into the right elbow, we can start to lean forward and maybe the feet start to lift. Now, if you have this pose, I'll take you to the next pose. Let's see if we can open the legs, straightening that right leg that's underneath and kicking the left leg back behind you. Ooh. And again, this blanket comes in nice and handy. Let's come back to our side. <sighs> Crow pose. And come out. Nice. I hope some of you got it. Anyone get that last pose? Let's see a couple of you. Nice job. So we're coming back into a forward fold. So let's go ahead and lift the hips. Pedal out the knees a couple times. Let's just take a breather here, actually. So let's heel to the feet a little further apart. And we're gonna slide the palms underneath the feet. Take a gorilla pose. Let the head drop down between the shoulders. Maybe here you find your little head bangs again, just kind of moving to the music. Remembering to breathe. Undo the hands, slowly roll to rise. Urdhva Hastasana, reach the arms up, hug the belly in, hands to heart center, Sama Sipiti. From here we do the other side, we bring the hands up and we sit down into our chair pose once again. Bring the hands to heart center, sit down, lift the toes, Pada Bandha. Again, we talked about bandhas last week. There's the Uddiyana Bandha, Pada Bandha, Mula Bandha. Pada Bandha is at the bottoms of the feet. The plantar fascia, we're lifting the toes to engage the soles of the feet. Sit down a little deeper and let's twist to the left. Look over to the left. You can always open the arms if you want to. Can be nice. Maybe you look up at the left hand. Let's bring the hands back to heart center, start to lift and lower that right heel. And let's step it back into our lunge. It's definitely a scary pose to come into. It feels, feels a little like you're just gonna fall on the floor. That's kind of part of the fun. From our twisted lunge, remember to keep that back right leg nice and strong. From here, we're gonna slowly transition into warrior two. So bring the hands down, lower the right heel and swing the arms up. Warrior two, Vira Vajrasana two. Finding our pose here. It's not just a transition pose, it's also its own pose that brings you lots of strength. It can bring you a little bit of inner silence, even when metal is blasting behind you. <sighs> Breathe here. Hug the belly in, tuck the tailbone underneath. Stay here nice and strong, shoulders are low. Take a look at that back right arm, make sure it's not doing that flamingo arm with the bent elbow, keep it nice and strong with the left. 
And you can turn your head looking back and looking forward. Let's flip the left palm, reverse warrior. Look at my watch. That's what we got. Good time. And let's come into our side angle pose. Left arm to left thigh, right arm over right ear. Making that nice long line from the right fingertips to the right toes, right heel. And then you can always come down onto your block. So block underneath the left hand. Actually, before we do this pose, we do want to come into our triangle. So let's come up into our warrior two for a moment. Straighten out that left leg. And then triangle pose. Chicken asana, you can use your block here always. The right arm reaches up. Look up at your right thumb. There are so many concepts that you could think about when it comes to if you're interested in Hinduism or Buddhism. One thing I do like to think about when I'm in practice is Samadhi, which is kind of looking at and becoming one with something. And it happens when you're kind of mindlessly, but also mindfully doing your job and time just flies by. You've kind of become one with that moment and time isn't really a factor. Maybe you think about that when you're looking at whatever you're gazing upon. You're thinking about the present moment. You're thinking about the oneness of you with that object. And that might not be too spiritual for you, which is totally fine. I just like to think about that. So from here, we're gonna start to bend that left knee. So we're back in our side angle pose. And then we're lowering the right hand to the block flipping up that right heel and coming into that twisted lunge, looking to the left, lifting the left arm. And again, we're kind of lowering the heel, lifting the right arm, kind of switching back and forth from side angle to the lunge. And it's a matter of switching the arms and lifting and lowering that back right heel. So keep going. See if you can swing your gaze all the way to the left when you do the twist and all the way up to the sky when you do the side angle. Just to keep the upper spine part of this practice. Let's do one more round and we're meeting in side angle pose. All right, from here, you can move the block to the side. We're going back into our lunge. We're bringing our hands to heart center as we twist in the low lunge and we step the back foot to our chair pose twisted. I'm gonna turn around so you can see me better. And we come down sitting on the heels from our twisted chair. So again, we're doing another side crow prep. So again, there's no pressure to come into the full pose if you don't feel ready for it but I would like you to practice setting it up so when you feel ready, you feel stronger, you do know the correct way to set it up so you can get into it easier, right? So we're starting with a twist. We're bringing the hands down to the floor. And just to make sure that right arm is where it wants to be, we're gonna lift the right arm up to the sky, look up, and then bring it down over that left leg, just kind of making sure. So while the hands are on the floor, I have my blanket in front of me just in case. I'm gonna bring my feet closer together, so inner heels are touching, big toes are touching the inner part of the sole. From here, and again, we're doing the same thing as the other side, just switched. We're gonna lean that outer left hip into the left elbow and then lift it up. And just kind of practice leaning that in, finding leverage there. And that's really the trick with almost every arm balance pose where you use the backs of the arms to find balance. It's all about how to leverage yourself on top of your arms. All right, so let's try that next step. We let that elbow come into the left hip, and then maybe we start to lift the feet, coming into our side crow, lifting. And if you can get that next step, straighten the legs and kick that right leg back. And let's lower. Whew. 
<sighs> let's untwist, let's come into child's pose. Because why not? First, collecting our breath, sitting down towards the heels. Take a few breaths. And slowly just start to come up, sitting on your heels. And you take a, a sip of water. It's always nice to give yourself time when you ever do some kind of inversion. Um, just because the blood is kind of rushing to your head, your heart rate goes up, and you just want to give yourself some transitional time to come out of the pose. So I wasn't going to teach this next pose, but I think that since we talked a lot about, and I, I explained it the way I wanted to, um, with like leaning into your own body and kind of finding leverage on yourself, we're going to try this next pose. And I can't remember the name of it. Isn't that classic? And I'll, I'll tell you next week or I'll post it to the, the um, Facebook once I remember. But my ADHD brain doesn't work like that. So we're just going to do the pose. So since we already warmed up the wrists, we warmed up with some arm balances. Let's bring the hands down to the floor, but our fingertips pointing in towards us. Now, if you're doing this and this already doesn't feel good for you, then maybe this pose isn't for you today. And I might not even do this pose right now and like get into it correctly because I didn't practice it right before. So I might fall on my head just as much as you might. So we're gonna go ahead and bend the elbows and then we're going to lower the belly onto the elbows. And this looks very strange. So right now you're just watching and maybe you're trying it a little bit. From here, I'm gonna to try to take flight, lifting the feet. <sighs> take a breath, and of course, you can take your blanket, put it right in that falling on your face zone so you fall on the blanket. So again, just to walk through it again, fingertips pointing towards your knees. You lean forward, maybe walk the knees back. Bend the elbows and lower the belly, the lower belly onto the elbows. Start to lift the knees, lean forward more. And lift off. Whew. Nice. Let's come onto the heels. Let's do another little wrist stretch after that one. Roll them out one direction. And the other direction, roll the wrists. Nice. So feel free to always email or Facebook message me or Instagram message me if you ever have any um, desires to, to work on one balance pose and we can do a class where we kind of build up to it and get you into that pose. So Cal City Privates. So from here, we're gonna come down, just our regular seat and come into a twist. So we're just crossing the right foot over the left thigh, reaching the right arm back behind us and twisting over to the right. Doesn't have to be totally extreme. You can just go ahead and hug that right knee with the left arm. And make sure you bring the upper spine part of it. So one way you do that is by turning the head as much as you can. And let's switch sides. You can either do a little fan kick or just switch. Reaching back with the left hand right arm in front of that left thigh, or you're just hugging that left knee. Looking to the left. And as our final cool down, while still sitting up, we're just gonna let the legs come out in front of us, toes pointed up, move the skin away from the sit bones, shifting side to side. Flex the toes up, roll the shoulders down and back, hug the belly in and just slowly tilt forward, grabbing the shins. Maybe you do get to grab the toes. Stay lifted here in the chest. Maybe you look up a little bit. Again, get that upper thoracic and cervical part of the spine involved here. Nice, release the feet. Come all the way down to your backs. 
it is time for Shavasana. So if you, if you want to just come directly into to your Shavasana, you can do that. Or you can take one final pose. That can be anything. For me, I always kind of go into the classic happy baby or plow pose. In your Shavasana, it can be laying flat. It can be Supta Baddha Konasana. Bound recline angle pose. You can always have your legs go up the wall. Breathe. I didn't pick the slowest music for Shavasana today, but I also kind of liked that because I wanted you to feel a sense of stillness. And whatever your environment, environment may be, maybe the song really relaxes you even though it's a little bit faster. Everyone take a deep breath in and fill the lungs. Big exhale to the mouth, sigh. <sighs> Letting your body melt down into the floor. Maybe you imagine your body dripping down into your mat. One atom at a time dripping down, sinking into the floor, merging with the environment. Maybe you start to notice your heartbeat. Maybe you're more aware of your breath. Maybe you picture your lungs taking in the air and the diaphragm pushing it out. Your knees are open, use your hands to close the knees. And take your time coming into a seat. No need to rush. You can also stay on the floor if you'd like. Just resting your seated position, taking a moment to thank yourself for coming to your mat today. There's no one or nothing <clears throat> keeping you accountable. It's only you and yourself doing what you think is best for your body, your mind, your general well being. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, bring the hands together. Showing gratitude for another day, <clears throat> another opportunity. The light and dark in me loves and honor the light and dark in you. Together we say namaste. Thank you so much for joining. Hope your shoulders are feeling good, or maybe they're a little sore. That's kind of fun when they feel sore. You're like, yeah, I did something, and I know it. Because my muscles hurt. But um, thanks so much for joining. If you're watching this on YouTube, we try and put all of our videos on YouTube unless there's some kind of technical error. Um, and I'm very bad at editing video, so sorry. This looks terrible. <laughs>
Um, but everyone watching right now, thanks so much for joining.